29 years ago today, on April 15th, 1993, the world lost one of the greats. Leslie Charteris passed away. Leslie Charteris was the man who created The Saint, and he was the author who had, out of all of the many authors I've read, probably the biggest impact on my life. So I just want to make a short video to talk about exactly that. So stay tuned. Hi guys, it's me, and I have recently been reading this book, The Saint in Europe, or rereading this book. I don't reread books very often because there are so many books to read, but there was a short story in here called uh, The Golden Journey that is one of my favorite saint stories, and it's one that is, is influencing the theme of a book I'm about to write, so I was catching up with it again. But it's funny, The Law of Attraction has this weird way of throwing coincidental things into your path. So the moment I'm inspired to pick up a Leslie Charteris book that just happens to fall upon the uh, 29th anniversary of his death. Yeah, April 15th, 1993 in Windsor, England. My sister lives in Windsor. Uh, Leslie Charteris passed away. And Leslie Charteris was an incredibly influential author in my life in particular. And he's a fascinating guy. And one day I think I should make a video about him. I haven't researched it before this, uh, but he really is a fascinating, fascinating individual. But he is also like fascinating because he created this iconic fictional character, the saint. And I think you probably have to be about my age to really be cognizant of the saint, but he was big. Simon Templer, otherwise known as the saint, was a huge literary phenomenon. I mean, he, Culturally, up until the invention of James Bond, he was James Bond. He was the Robin Hood of modern crime. This incredibly handsome, suave, um, upscale, jet-setting world traveller who would go and rob from the ungodly criminals and crooks and stuff like that, keep a nice percentage for himself and do right by everybody. He was a wonderful literary character and he was the invention of this man, Leslie Charteris. And instead of talking about Leslie Charteris, let me talk about the books and their impact on me. Because so many people have talked about Leslie Charteris. In fact, if you want to know about Leslie Charteris? Ian Dickerson, he is the man you should Google. He is a wonderful, wonderful writer, television producer, uh, and he was a friend of Ian, of uh, Leslie Charteris. And the remarkable thing is, so good of a friend of Leslie Charteris that when Leslie Charteris passed away, he had some of his books and he gave some of them to me and I'm so excited. The writer who is the most influential in my entire life, I have some of his books signed to him. It's incredible, incredible. But let me, let me talk about the saint. Who is the saint? What does he mean to me? Well, I love books growing up. I had a very lonely upbringing, uh, the, the, sorry that sounds tragic, no I had a very happy upbringing but it was very lonely because I grew up on a farm, my brother and sister which were much older than me, didn't really see them very much, I lived too far away to hang out with my friends a lot so I went for long long walks with my dog and um, I read a lot and I loved adventure stories, I started off uh, reading all of the fantasy sagas and I got into sci-fi. Um, and I would just read voraciously. And the house I grew up in, we had 3,000 books. Now, I remember we had one corridor that was just a, a long corridor lined with nothing but books. And they were organized by like science fiction, my father's science fiction books, and then romance books and, and bonk busters and stuff. So I devoured them all. And I got a real taste for adventure stories. And I got into um, Jules Verne. I devoured all the Jules Verne books. and and things like that, and I, uh, Sherlock Holmes, I devoured all of, uh, H, of um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes books. My father actually had some of the original ones from the Strand magazine, it's incredible. But I, I needed more, I needed more. And my dad used to say, oh, there's a character called The Saint, you should really, really read some of his stories. And I did. My 18th birthday, my father decided to, to give me this book, The Saint in New York and it changed my life. The Saint in New York, it was originally published in 1935, this is the 20th edition, 1952. But The Saint in New York introduced me to this, this character called, Les, uh, called, oh, I can't even get the book back in there, Simon Templer, the Robin Hood of modern crime. He was a six foot two, slim, impossibly handsome, dark haired, blue eyed permanently tanned, suave, action-adventure hero who um, 
Yeah, he didn't give a shit. <laughs> he was completely outside of the bounds of polite society, uh, immaculately dressed. He drove this impossibly huge, beautiful car called a Hirondelle, and he would identify the ungodly. These were crooks, criminals, blackmailers, swindlers, corrupt politicians, corrupt businessmen, bad people. And he would call them the ungodly, and he would insert himself into their schemes and turn the tables and end up robbing them of the money they intended to rob from other people. And he would normally distribute it back to the people who needed it the most, but he would always keep a healthy percentage himself. He was yet yeah, known as the Robin Hood of modern crime. And I just was instantly, like, my imagination was just captured by him. And I think it was because of the fact he was this impossibly too good to be true, knife throwing badass who spoke 12 languages fluently and was incredibly handsome and always well dressed and always had money and stuff. But what I liked about him was his nobility. He always did the right thing, but he always took a percentage. I liked that. He was a very pragmatic hero. And the stories about him. Leslie Charteris' writing, it's kind of archaic these days. And I've had trouble like introducing my kids to it because of that. But if you read it, it is just the most beautiful, poetic storytelling. It's so immersive. And he comes up with such original characters and such original situations that go in. It's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And I remember I read this book, The Saint in New York, and I was just like, I'm going to go to New York one day and I'm going to clean up New York just like the saint did. And I ended up in New York and I can honestly say I think this book is what brought me to America and it's not even my favorite saint book. My favorite saint book is this one. It's one of the first ones uh, in the series. His, he, he used to write like real action adventure novels with an ensemble cast and then as he became more successful it became more formulaic and the saint was the only character. This one was originally published in May 1930. This is the 18th impression September 1948. Um, and it's The Last Hero by Leslie Charteris and ironically 21st edition they changed it and called it The Saint Closes the Case but this book to me oh, it's amazing it was written you know a good a good 12 years after the First World War had ended but the impact of the First World War was still present in everybody's minds and this book is about the saint Simon Templar and his gang of friends who are like crooks who do criminal stuff but for the right reasons stumble across a man who's invented a doomsday machine and he's completely mad and he just wants to make that doomsday machine enter some kind of service for one side or the other side in a war that threatens to end all wars this book yeah nine years before it actually happened could tell the war was coming in europe and the saint was like we must do anything and everything to prevent another great war and so they decide to find this scientist and convince him not to make his weapon available to people and if he can't be convinced they're going to kill him yeah it's very brutal actually these days films and movies and heroes and stuff are very sanitized this is kind of brutal and pragmatic but it's still heroic at the same time and it just had an incredible influence on me and I think it's what really got me into books, what I really loved about books, because Leslie Charteris as a writer was incredibly prolific. He wrote, I think it's a, it's approaching around 50 books or something like that. Um, and he wrote short stories and then they'd republish the books with different names. The Last Hero Became the Saint Closes the Case, blah, blah, blah. They get a bunch of short stories like uh, the one I showed you earlier, The Saint in Europe has a bunch of short stories in. Then they repackage the short stories into to other books. And so there, there were a bunch that were written in French because Leslie Charteris, of course, was almost like a human version of The Saint and he could, he could write French fluently. So there were so many different stories and it was incredible. I used to just love going to secondhand bookstores and rooting through all the things. And I would grab any Ian Fleming book and I would grab any Leslie Charteris book. Um, and I built up a massive collection of them and I still have most, but I just loved it. I just loved the way he told stories. I loved the the amoral aspects of the saint. He was an anti-hero before an anti-hero was really a thing. I loved the fact that he always smiled and he was always charming. And I mean, to me, that's been one thing that I've clung to. It's like when life is standing there ready to punch you in the face, you smile at it and laugh and uh, 
there are lines from it, the whole idea and the last hero it sort of ends with the, the line about the best thing in life is comradeship and careless laughter and that to me has always been a watchword. That's what I love about being part of the Bond community. Hanging out with a bunch of guys and a bunch of girls who are also guys as in like everyone is just a friend in the Bond community. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female or whatever. We all believe in the same thing and we all share this comradeship and careless laughter. That's what it's all about. That's what life is about. And to me, the Leslie Charteris Saint books were just a celebration of life, a celebration of what's right, what's wrong, living for the sake of adventure, doing the right thing, and just laughing and smiling at whatever life throws your way. They've been incredibly influential to me. And it's funny, the chap, Ian Dickerson, who gave me Leslie Charteris' books, he was a friend of Leslie Charteris, which is incredible. I, I find it remarkable to think that a man who died 29 years ago, who died before I'd even picked up my first Saint book, has had such an incredible influence on my life. But I'm so glad <laughs> that that happened. I don't think I would have done half the things that I've done in my life if it wasn't for the whole idea of the, the Saint with his crooked halo and his sparkle in his eye and his wry smile saying, challenge authority, challenge the rules, do what you want to do. Ian Fleming, said say always say yes to adventure and that is something i think the saint just embodied always say yes to adventure and hopefully i've said yes to more adventures than i've said no to and my life has been quite exciting in many ways and long may it continue that way but i owe it all the best of my life i owe it all to leslie charteris's books and they got republished recently in fact uh, there's one i can't I can't even remember. Oh, here we go. Send for the Saint. I even wrote the forward to that one. Oh, yeah. God, you can tell that. That's how dream of my life was to write a Saint story. I never did that, but I did actually get my name in a Saint book. Send for the Saint, forward by Roland Hume. The Saint books are wonderful, and if you haven't had a chance to read them and you do enjoy reading and the English language and adventure and the structure of storytelling and everything like that, pick some up and read them. They're beautiful. They're wonderful cool books and I think one of the really really cool things about them is the fact that Leslie Charteris was half Chinese and he experienced a lot of discrimination throughout his life in fact when he lived in America during the second world war you know he wasn't Japanese but because his eyes weren't blue and the same color as, uh, as good uh, patriotic Americans he had to register every year as a, as a Chinese American so he experienced discrimination firsthand and that means these days you know, in some cases, like 90 years after the books were written, they don't contain the same problematic elements that books by like Ian Fleming do. Because Leslie Charteris always had more empathy, I think, to being different to other people and things. He was always different. That's why the saint is so different and rebellious. But in the same way, he had a lot more empathy for people because of that. So, yeah, wonderful man. Wonderful books. Wonderful impact he had on my life. And... Um, all I can say is I'll raise a toast to Leslie Charteris and I can't even express what an impact his books had on my life. Anyway, I'll wrap this video up uh, and I will speak to you again soon. Ciao. I'm Roland Hume. I've sold 67,000 copies of my books. If you want to find out how I did it, I've got a link right here you can click. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. I've got more videos coming soon. Thank you.